Today, we're going to look at event-driven architectures, also known as EDA. Event-driven architectures have been around for quite a long time, and for good reason. They offer a powerful way to build decoupled, scalable, and resilient yet flexible distributed systems. But EDAs can mean different things for different people. So for clarity, we're going to take a look at four of the main types of EDAs to see how they're similar and different from one another. But before we get started, let's talk about events. Simply put, what is an event? Well, an event is something that happens in a business that's important enough for the business to want to take notice of it. This could be, for example, a customer at an e-commerce store purchasing an order, or it could be, for another example, an IoT device that's reporting uh, sensor information on an assembly line. A service must detect that the event occurred, and then it encodes and formulates this event into what we call a record containing all of the information about that event. Records are also called messages. I often use them interchangeably, but for this, we'll go with record. Once we've created a record, we can then react to it. And this is where the driven part comes from in event-driven architectures. The first type we're gonna look at is application internal. So application internal means that there's a application, and this application has an internal process that creates records for consumption and processing by another process inside that app. You may have multiple instances of this app, and the records may travel even across networks from one instance to another. But the important thing about this is all of this is completely encapsulated within the application the definition of the record, the schema, the creation or the, or the production of it, and the consumption and processing. There isn't any inter-application or inter-service communication. It's all internal here. Popular examples that you might see, uh, the Go language with uh, its applications where you can create channels to pass records is one. And you may also see this uh, with ACA, the ACA framework, uh, for the JVM or Java Virtual Machine. The second type that we're gonna look at is what we call ephemeral. And ephemeral means that it is temporary. It's not durably retained. So with ephemeral messenger, we're going to produce a record. And this is typically done by a, an element that we call a sender. And the sender writes the record into a subject. Then a receiver that's registered on the subject receives that record and can process it. Now, you could have a second receiver as well, and this receiver would also get a copy of this record that's published to the subject, but only if it's online at the time that it's been sent. Ephemeral messaging means that we don't retain this data durably. You have to be online to get it. If you're offline and you come back online, you won't get it, it hasn't been retained. This ephemeral messaging pattern has historically been common for enterprise service buses or ESBs. And one of the primary use cases was to decouple the receivers from the senders so that they could exist independently of each other and only be coupled on the subject. The other is for high volume fan out where you could have one sender send a record to a whole large list of different uh, receivers for them to process as they need. The third type we're going to look at is queues. And in this case, we're looking at queues in the style of JMS, which is a Java message service. A queue is an ordered append-only list. And we have a producer that publishes records into the queue. Similar to ephemeral messaging, 
We also, of course, will have a consumer. And this consumer will consume records out of the queue from the, uh, the oldest record first. So it'll consume this oldest record, R, process it. And once completed, it will notify the broker that it has completed successfully and that it can now delete that record. So we only keep records in a queue for as long as it takes for them to be processed, acknowledged, and then we can delete it. Now you can have multiple consumers for a queue, but if you do, these consumers are going to share the workload. So while the first record went to our first consumer, the second record will go to our second consumer here. This is also known as uh, round robin consumption. Two popular examples of brokers that implement queues include, but of course are not limited to, uh, Rabbit MQ and Active MQ. Our fourth and final type of event-driven architecture that we're going to look at is known as Publish Subscribe or Pub Sub. This is often also called uh, streaming and one of the most popular candidates for this is Apache Kafka. With streaming, the records are written to a topic and the records written here are much like a queue. They are durable. They're written in a specific order and they're also written by a producer who publishes it. Topics have one or more consumers and at least in Kafka, the consumers can belong to a common consumer group. What this means is it lets you divide up the work such that all of the consumers in this consumer group are working together, uh, sharing the load similar to with queues where we're doing round robin. But you can create multiple consumer groups on a Kafka topic. And the benefit of this approach is each consumer group gets a full allotment of all of the records that are written into the topic. These new consumers can also go back in time to read from say the start of the topic, perhaps the middle of the topic, or even uh, at the most recent. Again, it's up to you. With topics, we retain the data for as long as you need, including indefinitely. We also can offer time limits. We can offer uh, um, bite size limits, but the benefit of hot topic is you can keep that data and you can create new consumers and you can rewind them to reread that data as many times as you need, as many times as you want. I mentioned today that Apache Kafka is one of the most popular ones, but there are other offerings. We've just talked about Rabbit MQ and Active MQ. They also both offer their own versions of topics as well. So let's wrap this up. There are several types of event-driven architectures and they all have different purposes and they solve different use cases. Nowadays, brokers like Apache Kafka form the backbone of distributed business-wide asynchronous communication. They decouple producers from consumers in both time and space, and they provide that durable append-only log of important business events as they occur. In turn, you can build scalable and reliable event-driven architectures, streaming the records you need all the way across your business. We've just scratched the surface though. If you would like to learn more, please check out the video details for related content. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Stay tuned for future episodes where we'll talk more about event streams, event-driven architectures, and Apache Kafka.